This would be a lesson that uh, our friends over in the GOP might be able to figure out. The sort of people who have been power in, in the GOP for a very long time might, might be able to figure out if they had an ounce of self-awareness, but they don't. So instead they're blaming Lauren Boebert. Uh, we have Lauren on the call. Lauren, thank you so much. I know you're very, very busy right now, uh, but thank you for making time to come on the show. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on, Michael. So Lauren, where does it all stand? We've given a recap of, of the, the speaker fight through last night on the show. Kevin McCarthy lost three rounds of voting two days ago. He loses three rounds of voting yesterday. You and those terrible, evil House Freedom Caucus Republicans, you're, you're not budging here. So what happens? Well, let's begin at where it started. This started in the summer. We wanted to handle this privately um, and and have a solution before January 3rd. Um, these negotiations began in the summer and they were dismissed because Kevin McCarthy um, thought he was going to have this massive red wave and our votes did not matter. When he saw that the $300 million that he raised did not produce the red wave that he promised, he realized quickly he's going to need our votes. And so some concessions um, were were put into play. Uh, it was very difficult to get them into play. It was difficult to get them approved um, with our rules process. The way Washington, D.C. operates and functions, we want to fundamentally change this town. It is broken. Um, it, it is less popular with the American people than cockroaches. Uh, so we have to get something right here and we cannot go along with the status quo. Well, on January 2nd, um, two of my fellow colleagues and myself, Matt Gates, Scott Perry, we walked into uh, Leader McCarthy's office after whipping votes all day long and handed him 218 votes. We said, here it is, let's seal the deal. Here's some common sense issues that you can put forward, some promises that you can make, single member motion to vacate. So you, there is accountability on the third in line to the presidency of the United States. You cannot demand more responsibility and follow Nancy Pelosi's precedence of less accountability. So this is our check and balance on the speaker. And that was a priority for me personally, certainly, and for many others. Um, but then things like bring the Texas border plan to the floor for a vote. Bring a term limits bill to the floor for a vote. Any member who wants to reduce spending in an amendment will make that amendment in order so we can bring it to the floor and have a vote. Earmarks, bring them to the floor individually for a vote. This is spending money that we do not have. So let's at least have a vote on it instead of packing it into a bill where we'd have no option to either swallow the whole thing or say no way. Um, these are things that we presented to him. He uh, solicited a list from us of committee assignments. All members provide committee assignment requests. We know where our talents and skills are, are best utilized. And we provided that list. Um, Kevin McCarthy made a, a great argument saying, listen, the people in this group only want two committees. I need you spread out. I want you to have more influence. And we agreed with that. And we said, you know, this is a time constraint on many of the members. It's a lot of responsibility, a lot of pressure, but we're willing to take that sacrifice and have these committee assignments that bear more pressure. And so we provided that to him. And then January 2nd, when all of that was laid on the table, Kevin McCarthy laughed us out of the room, said that it was a selfish wish, wish list and would not take the deal. Well, now here we stand, Michael. I no longer have those 218 votes to provide to Kevin McCarthy. So it doesn't matter if I go to the floor today and vote for Kevin McCarthy because there are now more than ever votes that he does not have to get to that speakership. Um, this is very important to know. He walked out of that meeting and lied about what we requested. Trust is absolutely broken if there were in, if there was any to begin with. And this is a huge problem. We want unity in the Republican Party. And I believe now is the time to start seriously considering consensus candidates who will unify the Republican Party so we can get to work for the American people. Th this is really important context, I think, because what you're saying is over the summer, Leader McCarthy just didn't think he needed you guys because there were Correct. supposed to be more Republicans in the House. And so he would be able to win the speakership without having your votes along. Because of what happened, 
that turned out to be a bad bet. And when you make bad bets, you got to pay the price for those bad bets. And, and you bring up this other point, which is trust. And I think this is really important because a lot of this debate has focused on how on the issues, Kevin McCarthy is relatively pretty good. You know, we, we come from a world of John Boehner's. So I guess Kevin McCarthy is more conservative than John Boehner. But, but what you're saying is, no, it's really about trust. When we're talking about leadership elections, we need to be able to trust the leader. And, and what you're saying is you don't think that Leader McCarthy has proven himself trustworthy. Correct. And that's why we wanted the tools implemented um, to where maybe we don't need to trust him because hmm. the individual member is empowered enough to get the job done and is not ruled by a dictator as a uh, as speaker. Um, this is not a kingdom that we live in. We don't anoint a king. I, I believe that this is how our founding fathers intended this process to work. Our vote um, is there to be debated, not just um, rubber stamped and cast to the biggest fundraiser. Um, but you cannot have good faith negotiations where trust is absent. And so that's why motion to vacate was so important to me because that is the check and balance on this position. If you break trust, if you don't do what you promised, well, buddy, you're out of there. Hmm. And he has already shown he's not willing to do that. Um, I still have not seen a, a public announcement of a single member motion to vacate. He's lying and, to and the Lauren, for those who don't, that he For gave those listening that. who don't sure, know what yeah. that is, what, what is a motion to vacate? A motion to vacate um, gives us the opportunity to remove the speaker and have another vote for speaker if necessary. This is something that does not get used, but it's available. This is something Thomas, Thomas Jefferson um, wrote and has been in effect for nearly two centuries. And Nancy Pelosi was the first speaker in history to modify that. She removed that individual empowerment from the uh, from the member and uh, and said, you no longer have a say in this. I get to rule how I want and you don't have a check. You don't have a balance. Kevin Mac McCarthy wanted to leave that as Nancy Pelosi had it. There were concessions. He got down to 50, got down to 20, got down to five. No, Thomas Jefferson wrote it as one member. Any one member can bring that motion to vacate the chair forward. And that is our accountability. This is something that was my red line. And uh, I've only heard from a staff member who chased us out of the GOP conference and begged us to vote for Kevin McCarthy. We'll give you a single member motion to vacate. And I said, that's adorable. Where's Kevin saying it? Hmm. So, so th th I guess this is now where the rubber meets the road. And I know you're short on time. So what happens after all of this context, I mean, I think you've explained your position very, very well. I think that it's, it is pretty clear that Leader McCarthy, he just, he thought he had the votes and he didn't have the votes. And, and this actually, the same thing happened in 2015. Let's not forget, Kevin McCarthy was the heir right. apparent after John Boehner. He didn't have the votes and that's how Paul Ryan emerged as the compromise candidate. So, so what happens? What could Kevin McCarthy come out and say right now that would win over your votes and maybe the votes of your colleagues in the Freedom Caucus, or if there's nothing that he could say, who, who would you support today? I know that this is a little bit in flux, but who would you support today to replace him? Right. So we have been offering a menu of other candidates. Um, I, I don't believe that my, my switching to Kevin McCarthy matters because there are so many who are solidly, Kevin, you can issue a public apology. You can change all the rules. You can wear a straight jacket and, and just have a portrait that says that you're speaker and we get to run this place. And they're not going to vote for Kevin McCarthy. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we do have to start looking forward um, to other, other candidates. And I can name 200 who are potential candidates right out of the conference GOP. I'm excluding myself. So that's why that number is 200 and Kevin's excluded as well. <laughs> um, but, you know, this this is something that we have to start talking about. We presented um, Jim Jordan's, uh, Jim Jordan. We have um, presented Andy Biggs. We've presented Byron Donalds. Um, I've heard Jim Banks' name um, be voted on in, in these during these votes. Maybe it's someone outside of Congress. Maybe it's a Lee Zeldin who actually won us the majority without his efforts in New York running for governor, we wouldn't have the majority. Yeah. And maybe it's it's someone who is in the conference, um, like a Kevin
Kevin Hearn, who is currently chairman of the Republican Study Committee, which is the largest caucus in the Republican conference. He was unanimously elected with 173 votes to chair that committee, and he actually has a balanced budget that he wants to put on the floor, which is another thing that Kevin denied in our proposal on January 2nd. Uh, so maybe it's someone like that who already has the trust of the conference and can truly get to 218. Before I let you go, Lauren, is, is the trust now just irreparably broken? That is to say, if Kevin McCarthy came out and issued a statement and said, okay, I'll give you a single member motion to vacate. Okay, I'll give you this, that, or the other thing. One, would that change your vote? And two, would that change enough votes to, to put him into the speakership? I know you've suggested maybe not, but, but just to be totally clear, are you saying that from the people you're talking to, McCarthy's speaker candidacy is, is actually dead? It's dead. Yes. The nails are in the coffin. And uh, there are plenty of members who are cheering our efforts on who are afraid of retribution. Um, we were threatened in conference. It, it, was, it was a nightmare in there. We were threatened um, by steering uh, um, committee members who, who actually assign committees to members of Congress that um, if we vote against Kevin at all, we will not receive committee assignments. And Kevin McCarthy affirmed that. He stood up and said, your district elects you, your conference elects what committee you are assigned to. Um, and so trust is broken. Um, as it stands for me, I am a no on Kevin. And there are too many others who are there uh, who don't allow him to get to 218. He doesn't have the numbers, Michael. Wow. That's, that's really, really big. And I have to tell you, I know that people are pulling their hair out over this, especially in the establishment GOP. To me, this is politics. This is a constitutional republic at work. This is it. This is kind of how it works. And if you're going to make bets in politics, then you got to make sure those bets pay off or you're going to pay the price. And if you, if you want a leadership role, I know you recently had an interview on television where, where the host who will remain unnamed was, was uh, yelling because he said, well, Kevin McCarthy has 200 votes. You only have 20 votes. Well, it, it, I thought you made the point very well. The first test of a congressional leader, someone who is in leadership, someone who's the Speaker of the House, is can you get the votes that it takes to put you into the office? Because the whole job right. is getting the votes and creating consensus. Lauren, thank you so much for taking the time today. I will be waiting with popcorn, maybe with some booze, as Kat Kamek suggested people do, to, to see how this fight uh, plays out. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. And I do believe that history is going to show that we are on the right side of this. We're going to get it right. All right. Thank you, Lauren. We are heading over to the member block right now, so do not go anywhere unless you're not a Daily Wire member. Then you've got to head on over to dailywire.com right now. Subscribe, become a member. We'll see you over at the member block.